Uh, my name is Sven Fazok and I'm from um, the BIH, the Berlin Institute of Health, which is a uh, research institute that is um, um, aligned with the Charité University Hospital here in Berlin. Um, so we're doing purely research and not, in, I'm not involved in, in, the, uh, in the routine uh, clinics. Um, we are part of Elixir Germany and um, I'm mainly involved in the compute platform. Um, so, uh, yeah, title of my talk is West and West. It, um, just a moment. Okay, so, but um, before I come to that, um, first about uh, myself a bit. Um, so, we are um, a, a, a service team, so we are supporting researchers uh, through the whole uh, data lifecycle with data management plans and um, establishing services and infrastructures for collecting and analyzing data, also making data uh, reusable. Um, but we have also a research focus. Um, we, we develop concepts and solutions for the management of health data, um, model data flows from, from the clinic into the research, which is quite complicated in Germany. Um, that data will, it's then also available um, for, for research, which is from the diagnostics, for example. Um, we develop a secure processing environments for translational, re uh, translational research and uh, develop also best practices and standards uh, for processing health data and, and, and in translational research. Um, as I said, part of, um, uh, part of Elixir and the German um, node, which is also called uh, Denby. Um, it's now it's the same uh, as Denby is the German Elixir node and um, also involved in uh, several German initiatives that make data available in German in different uh, fields. Um, now to West. So West stands for Workflow Execution Service. That is an API that is um, developed by the Global Alliance for Genomics and Health. You probably uh, know this. Um, the GA4GH um, develops standards uh, that aim to, to um, cover the whole process for genomic sequencing in clinics, but also in, in research, starting with the uh, uh, standardized consenting, um, with uh, the uh, genome sequencing definition of, of uh, the file formats, uh, for example, and um, then also having a standardized way to provide access to the data, and then up to um, stand, uh, find a defined standardized way uh, how researchers can then actually work with the data. So WES is part of um, these four uh, standards here that are used uh, to, to analyze data sets. Um, and these four um, uh, standards are also, are also called the Cloud Workstream APIs. So um, the first one is the Tool Registry Service or TIS. This is uh, used, or this is a standard that defines how um, tools and workflows can be shared more easily. Then there's the workflow execution service that tries to, uh, or that aims to define a standard how workflows are executed in different environments. And then there's the task execution service that then defines um, how specific tools within a workflow can then be um, executed. Um, for example, um, a specific uh, read mapper, for example, uh, in a specific environment, like defining an, an environment with, uh, with Docker, for example, a container, and then running this read mapper in a specific version. I think Alex Karnitz uh, already talked about the, the test here also in this round. And uh, then there's also the data repository service, the DIS that defines a standardized way on how data in different um, um, platforms can be accessed for object storage and also FTPs also involved here, or just um, in a normal file system. So why is these, uh, uh, why are these standards important? Um, there are several, um, Examples for that. So here's a uh, scenario which is quite useful. That is uh, from from J4GH. So the challenge is uh, to conduct reproducible research. The same genomic analysis has to run across multiple environments, but re researchers must learn custom custom processes for each platform they want to use. 
So this can be important, uh, for example, if, you, if a researcher wants to analyze uh, genomic data sets that are located in different sites, uh, for example, uh, sequencing facilities or university hospitals, and each site has its own process and processes or even workflow systems that they uh, use at these sites and uh, can be then configured uh, depending on, on the request of the researchers. Um, so this is of course complicated um, and it gets more complicated with the number of, of sites involved here for the researcher. And this is then even un, not handleable anymore that a, a single researcher can, for example, then um, run workflows in, in multiple different sites uh, to just to perform a single analysis. Um, this is um, relevant, of course, because uh, in several um, regions, it's not easy to, to transfer genomic data into a central location. Um, for example, in, in Germany, we have um, um, in every single state um, different laws that, that do not easily allow that genomic data is transferred to, uh, to another hospital, for example. Um, but with WES, um, WES lets research researchers define and package workflows and data in a standard way, uh, then hand the package to workflow engines running in different environments. Thus, WES makes it easier to analyze diverse data across multiple platforms. Um, yeah, WES also works in with a test uh, API another standard developed by the J4JH cloud work stream to execute specific tasks in a workflow. So now with, uh, with this whole um, environment, um, the workflow um, is well defined. And then um, the researcher does not have to interact with uh, different environments in these uh, different sites. It just needs to execute uh, to, to interact with this web, web specification. Um, on top of that, the researcher can then also more easily use an, um, a graphical user interface, for example, which also implements this standardized interaction and this uh, interface so that um, the researcher might also more easily have the, the, um, the choice of, uh, of using uh, an interface um, which a researcher prefers to run then um, different workflows in different engines uh, and, yeah. Okay, um, so in Elixir, um, this whole cloud work stream is the topic of the um, compute platform. Uh, we have this Elixir cloud and AI project, which is now also called an um, Elixir on cloud project. And here we aim to um, create a network of federated services in Europe in different um, compute environments. For example, in, in Finland, we have the CSC involved, Germany, the Denmi, um, and Czech is also a, a big partner and also Greece and multiple others. Um, and here we aim to um, create a network of these um, test services in whole Europe so that it becomes possible for researchers to run workflows more easily in a cloud environment and then the specific task tasks get executed where also the data is. So this is a, the idea um, that we we try to, that we are working on. Um, this is um, not yet in a production um, running system, but um, this is something we are working towards. To, um, yeah, if you, uh, I guess also Alex talked about this, uh, but if you want to more, find more about this whole uh, project, and then. Please go to this side here. Um, yeah, so um, more on the on the technical side. Um, these are the endpoints um, that uh, are included in this API definition. Um, this is an um, REST API. There are six endpoints. Um, it's quite easy. It's not not a, a very complicated um, specification. Um, we, it's possible to get information about the specific implementation of this WES. So, uh, with this get runs, you can uh, list all the workflows that are currently uh, running um, for, for the single user, for example. Um, post runs um, triggers the execution of a single workflow. And then there's some get uh, 
information about um, so to, to get information about a specific run, which is what is the status, what are the output files, and then there is an, um, also the possibility to cancel a running workflow. So it's not that much endpoints, but there are some some details behind it, of course, that um, yeah, uh, that provide also the the functionality that is required. Okay, um, so to WestKit, um, WestKit is our implementation of of this West interface. Um, why did we do that? So we have uh, so as a motivation. Um, I'm from the BIH, as I said, but um, the group where I now belong to, that they uh, were for, uh, for, um, at the DKFZ, the German Cancer Re Research Center before in Heidelberg, and they developed a um, um, workflow management platform called, called a one-touch pipeline OTP. So this is a system that uh, um, provides many functionalities um, for um, workflow execution and management um, for specifically for samples from, from cancer patients with respect to, to clinical studies. Um, it has lots of uh, functionalities like statistics, user management, notification system and database and so on. Um, so um, this OTP triggers then um, once uh, it receives new um, new files from the sequencing facility. It triggers then um, the, uh, the specific workflows in a more or less automated way based on the input um, yeah, on the samples uh, sheet that it uh, imported. And then the, um, the bioinformaticians, uh, bioinformaticians and the, uh, do not have to, to care about all these um, running the workflows anymore. They just look at the data and then um, look at the, the variants um, uh, and um, um, communicate that to a tumor board or use it in a study and so on. Um, yeah, so um, OTP has uh, included um, workflows that were developed for the Peacock um, analysis uh, now several years ago, and they use a system that is called RODI. So RODI is uh, also a workflow management system, I would say, um, that was developed uh, by the DKZ and is only used there. So it's, um, it's it has a similar story like uh, SnakeMake and NextFlow, um, but it wasn't, um, um, but it stayed within the single facility. So it wasn't um, used outside of the DKZ. So some amount, this is also because it's quite complicated to define workflows and Roddy. Um, so it's also um, not easy to update the, these um, now several years old workflows and anymore, or um, because um, there's no no um, big user community behind it. So like we have it for Nextflow and SnakeMake, for example. Um, so therefore, um, we decided that we want to replace this Roddy with a new system, and therefore we created WestKit. So WestKit um, can um, uh, trigger the execution of SnakeMake and Nextflow workflows and implements the J4JH West API. Um, yeah, we, um, as I said, we created it, uh, or we are developing this together with the with the DKF set with the same people. Um, it implements uh, the West API, and thereby um, SnakeMake support, okay, WestKit supports um, different execution environments. So we can use it uh, to run it uh, on-premise um, with uh, our HPC system. There we support Slurm and LSF cluster, and we can also run it in the cloud um, based on Kubernetes. Currently, we just have uh, these two uh, workflow engines here supported, but it's not that complicated to also include other workflow languages if we require to do so. Um, WestKit has also um, uh, connected uh, to a database that we use uh, for some persistent documentation of, of runs and um, also which parameter we used to trigger specific workflow executions. Um, WestKit also uh, implements the OIDC, uh, which is, um, which is uh, usable, for example, by our internally uh, with our LDAP system, 
um, but also with LS login from Elixir. Yeah. So if you want to find out more, um, here's here's our the link to our uh, GitLab repository. We want to have a look into the details. There's also documentation, um, which is uh, uh, still in, in, in the process of updating. So we are still developing WestKit, um, but it uh, can already be used um, to, for testing. So about the, a bit about the technical implementation. So WestKit is in Flask app. Um, it has a, a, a connection to a database. And WestKit then connects, depending on, on the configuration of WestKit, it can then submit um, workflow executions on, on cluster systems or in the cloud. And there we can uh, support currently SnakeMake and NextFlow. Um, so how, how do we use WestKit in, in our um, system? Um, we, um, on our cluster, so we, um, in, on our cluster, um, we work with, uh, with projects, like um, several people are, um, uh, um, belong to a specific project there, they have access to raw data and um, all, all project data and all and process data. Uh, we use WestKit um, to trigger any workflow executions on our uh, cluster. And so this can then be either be uh, triggered by OTP, as I explained before, um, specifically for the cancer genomics workflows, or manually by either our WestKit um, graphical user interface or a data manager. Um, if the workflow is not uh, supported by OTP, for example, because OTP is really focused on these cancer genomics workflows. But um, as you know, um, the diversity of data is growing and um, um, we also have now um, spatial genomics uh, workflows, for example, and to, to run these then also on data and make the data available to the researchers, we can also use um, WestKit. Um, the big advantage is that people, the researcher, do not have to care about the workflow execution by themselves. Um, they just um, um, define the parameter and what needs to be done. And then um, our data management team or the OTP uh, software will handle the execution. Um, this makes sense, of course, not for every use case, but uh, especially for for workflows that are um, executed in a more regular way for like for specific data sets that, that multiple projects share, uh, for example. So, and in the cloud, um, and this may be mostly interesting for you, um, we use um, WestKit uh, to create an also sensitive processing environment. So this is a very, um, a new project that we now uh, that we defined for the uh, biohackathon in Germany, which is um, in, in December this year. Um, here, we um, we have uh, a situation where we have uh, sensitive data and also validated workflow. And by validated workflow, I mean these are workflows that are um, that we know of that do not. Um, um, they, the results that these workflows uh, create uh, are not containing any sensitive animation, uh, information about the patients then anymore. Um, these could be SnakeMake or Nexo workflows, um, but this is a, 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 a fixed set of workflows that is um, um, that is both manu manually validated. I know there are also um, approaches that this can be more. Uh, automated, um, the, the seeing if a, a workflow, um, um, the workflow results can contain sensitive information, but not in this uh, scenario here. So um, the users um, can then um, use um, either the GUI or WestKit directly to trigger the execution of these workflows. And then um, the results of these workflows are then brought back to the users in specific user VMs. And then the users can only ex uh, access these secure results and not the sensitive data anymore, which would, could be um, genomic data, for example. 
um, we are going to implement um, this complete, complete system here in the, um, in the Denby cloud, which is an OpenStack uh, cloud that we operate in, in, in Germany. Yeah, if you're interested in this, um, please um, go here to this side or contact me if you, are, uh, if you want to find out more about this. Um, yeah, the cluster that we use for this is um, that is a uh, Slurm cluster that we create in the cloud. This is um, um, created by uh, colleagues from, from Bielefeld with a system called BB Grid. Yeah. Okay, so um, these were uh, a broad overview of, of WestKit. I think I was quite uh, fast. Um, but um, uh, um, currently, um, we have several milestones. As I said, we, we are still developing on WestKit. We want to go into some pre-production um, by the end of the year and aiming to, to be fully um, productional with WestKit in our system. So at the BIH and also they have said early next year. I'm currently working also on the documentation, um, which you, know, you might know is, uh, is an hard work because the documentation also is always old, um, but yeah, this is, uh, we need to update it. It was updated, uh, I think, uh, I'm not sure when, but it's currently not up to date, but we're working on that. And yeah, we will also implement the other uh, J48H cloud service APIs more um, directly in Westgate, for example, that workflows can be easily more easily be uh, used from uh, via this TIS interface, and also data can then be made available via this TIS interface. Okay, so that's uh, it from with my presentations here. My my main collaboration partners either here internally um, at the BIH or in in Germany in the German Node and Elixir. Yeah.